how's it going? Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, I'm Renee and I read a lot. And today I'm going to go over Bridgerton season two versus The Viscount Who Loves Me, the book that it's based on. I didn't bring it downstairs. I guess I'll go upstairs and get it. I would have happily left this upstairs, except I intentionally wore this light blue shirt because the book itself that I own, my copy, is light blue and I, you know, that was not worth it. <laughs> I'm gonna start doing my makeup and as always, everything will be linked in the description below what I'm using. Um, by now, this is my third time doing this, so you should know the drill, I should know the drill that I, it's difficult for me to talk and do things at the same time and to think and talk and do things at the same time is an even larger challenge. So what did I learn from last time? Nothing. Uh, I considered writing a script. I thought that would be a good idea. That would help me really make my thoughts more coherent. And then I thought, you know what? I just kind of like myself better when I'm free form, you know? So, oh wait, I got the, my husband and I got these new candles the other day and I thought it would be pretty on my purple shelf, so. But then what do I do with my llama? Does my llama go up here? I need to paint him. Um, he'll, he'll be painted eventually. One day I'm just not gonna say anything and he's gonna be painted. How fun of a bit would it be if I just like was constantly switching out the things on my shelves? I don't have enough things to do that, but that would be fun. Um, yeah, so I didn't learn anything from last time. I don't have a script. I'm just kind of free flowing talking. This is kind of a follow up. I did this for Bridgerton season one versus the Duke and I, the book it's based on. So now I'm doing it for season two because I liked Bridgerton season one more than I liked the Duke and I, the book. And I was thinking, in my head, okay, and I, I mentioned this, I talked about this. I said, maybe I just like whatever the form of media that I read or watch first. And it's not that I like The Duke and I better or Bridgerton season one, it's just happened that I watched the show before I read the book. And I want to make it clear that I did the same thing with this book. I watched the show whenever it first came out and then I read the book recently. And I would like to retract that opinion because the book for this, 12 million times better than the show. So I think I'm back to my original assumption that the Duke and I versus Bridgerton season one is a one-off and typically I like the book of things better. And I think that we can uh, move forward with that assumption. The Bridgerton season one versus the Duke and I is the exception that proves the rule, not the exception that disproves it. I don't know what the other exception that proves there's not a rule i don't know never really understood that phrase to be dead honest with you also i'm really sorry if i sound super congested and nasally and this is probably gonna have a bunch of edits where i go blow my nose <laughs> because i was traveling with my husband in prague and we went to go visit my sister and my sister was sick and somehow some way i also got sick crazy how that works now i am ill and i'm ill especially from traveling i always get ill when i travel just like except for whenever what was going on and we all wore masks and we'd all just gotten vaccinated we're all being super careful and nobody sick got on planes now it's like we all collectively forgot about that and now nobody wears masks and everybody's just sneezing free ball in their sneezes in the airplane and it gives me hives to think about but i just i'm very prone to illness when i travel so here we fucking are yes and then i also that and i got uh our second and final rabies vaccine today not because we were bitten or exposed but because we have travel plans coming up where it was suggested as like a good idea it wasn't mandatory but it was oh do you want it and one thing about me is i am actually horrified of getting rabies that's one of my worst fears and i wouldn't even call it irrational because rabies exists and i know that you can get the shots after and it'd be okay but once the symptoms set in i know it's like a 99 percent chance of not surviving and that terrifies me and so they were like okay it's like slightly recommended to get your rabies shot for this or like more than slightly it's recommended not necessary you could if you are exposed you would know blah 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 but i was like oh it's recommended give me the shot <laughs> and that shot can make you feel kind of crummy so I just got hit on all sides. My immune system is going through it. I am, I've put myself through it, um, but enough about me. <laughs> I'm here to talk about Bridgerton. So yeah, I liked the book way better. Again, trigger warning for this book overall, there is sexual themes, 
Spoiler warning for the book and the show. I'm assuming at this point, if you've wanted to consume the media, you have because it's been out long enough. But just in case, I will be discussing spoilers for both. So, and spoilers for the first season at the end of Bridgerton. So, do with that information what you will. So, as you know, just the briefest of overviews for anybody who's forgotten, for anybody who doesn't know. Ooh, got some concealer on my leg. Conceal the leg hair I haven't shaved in days. But the brief, brief overview is Anthony, eldest Bridgerton sibling, Lord Bridgerton. He's the A child. He's, he's decided it's time for him to take a wife. He's not even going to give up his rakish ways. He just wants a wife. And he wants a wife of substance because he wants heirs. And he wants his heirs to be good heirs to his Bridgerton estate. And he wants a pretty wife because he thinks it's going to be easier to have sex with somebody that you're attracted to, which checks out. But he absolutely does not want to fall in love with his wife because I guess that would be insanity. The whole reason he doesn't want to fall in love with his wife is because he's pretty convinced <laughs> that he is going to die early because his dad died young while when Anthony was 18 and his dad was like 38, I think. So Anthony's pretty convinced that he's only going to live to 38 too because he couldn't live past the age that his father lives. Um, which, okay, we all have our rational fears or maybe slightly rational. Mine is rabies. We've already been over this. Anthony's is being stung by a bee because that is what happened to his dad. His dad got stung by a bee and he died. Which I don't mean to laugh at anybody who's ever suffered complications from a bee sting. But they make it a point to say that he's not allergic to bees. That all the deceased Lord Bridgerton was not allergic to bees because he had been stung by bees before. And it's just a little funny that he, like, that's a kind of comical route to, to die in the early 1800s. Like, did, everything was out there killing you in the early 1800s, I guess. Regency England was fatal. <laughs> you could die from a bee sting. Imagine what they would do with, like, a four loco probably be worse for them than the bubonic plague. But anyway, and then he's like, I cannot fall in love because then what if my wife falls in love with me and then she mourns me when I'm gone? Uh, like all I want her for is the heirs. So if she mourns me, that's so sad. Which, okay, we're, that is somebody's logic. It's not my logic because in my opinion, if I knew my life was gonna be cut short or if I believed it for any reason, I would be like, let's live each day to the fullest, right? And then he is like, I'd rather never live a day in my life, which I guess is, is a thing that people go through. I don't know, I've never been that person, but I, it's valid, it's valid, right? To say like, okay, maybe it's even like selfless, some might say, to say that he doesn't wanna leave behind a grieving widow, just grieving heirs. I guess he doesn't plan on being a very involved father either because his kids are gonna, this is gonna, it's just generational trauma is gonna build on this if he also dies at 38 or whatever. So he he picks the, the diamond of the season, the season's beauty. He notices that she is smart, she is intelligent, she is very fair. She has an older sister, an older sister who in the show is 26 and therefore very old and the book is 20, <laughs> almost 21, and therefore is approaching spinsterhood, which is just hilarious on all counts because I didn't know when I got married at 26 that I was approaching spinsterhood, let alone when I was almost 21 and apparently about to be on the verge of like a crazy cat lady who lived alone and had no husband. I just double checked. Persuasion was published in 1817. 1818? I literally just checked this. End of 1817, beginning of 1818, which is Regency Air England, which is when Bridgerton takes place. Anne was 28 and had an older sister that still needed to be married. So the older sister was probably 29 or 30 and Anne herself fall, is falling in love um, and getting married in that book. So, well, the original 2021 might've been like comedic effect, like haha, they thought spinsters were old people. Not historically accurate, at least to the best of my knowledge. Not that I would consider like a Jane Austen novel a primary source, but if Jane Austen was writing about people in their late 20s getting married, then clearly it like couldn't have been that strange. Whatever. It's just just a little funny detail. So Edwina is the diamond of the season that Anthony wants to marry, right? And Kate is her older sister and Kate is not out. She's single, but she's not out to get married, but she's out to make sure Edwina finds a good husband. Or like help her in this journey. Their family's poor, so the two girls could only make their debut at the same time because they're poor and they could only afford one season in London for them to find husbands, whatever. Kate's a little feisty. She's a little, you know, she's got the the sass, the 
I'm not backing down without a fight kind of attitude. Very older sister vibes, extreme elder sister vibes. And she's protective of her younger sister, which also checks out. As an older sister, I feel confident in my knowledge on the subject. I am an expert. She's the eldest sister of all eldest sisters. And Anthony finds himself falling for Kate. Surprise, surprise. But again, he refuses to fall in love. So he's like, I'm still gonna go after Edwina, even though I love Kate. Until, and this is where the show and the books take a major diversion for each other, right? Because in the books, Kate gets stung by a bee on her chest. And then he is like, I'm gonna suck the stinger and the poison out so that you don't die because I have PTSD from watching my dad die. And they get caught in this compromising position. In the show, he goes to marry Edwina. He gets all the way to marrying her. He never proposes to Edwina in the books. That's not a thing. He marries Kate out of, you know, in the books he marries Kate because he asked you. He gets caught in a compromising position. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna do the honorable thing. I'm gonna marry Kate. I'm still not gonna fall in love with her, don't worry. I'm putting that aside. She gets injured in a horse riding accident and he realizes, you know what? I do love Kate. After they're married, I love her. I, I'm not afraid to admit it. Uh, you know, we love that arc for him and Kate, you know, takes him seriously. They talk about their problems, she takes him seriously. They work through it together and then they have a happily ever after where he does end up living to 40. They're still in love. In the show, I have no idea. I have no idea what they were thinking. I. I was watching this and I maybe they were trying to make me uncomfortable. I didn't like the way that this made me uncomfortable. There are some times that shows can make you uncomfortable and you leave and you're like, wow, that made me think really hard. Not this time. He's like, you know what? I do love Kate. So I'm gonna propose to her sister. Hate that, hate that. Uh, the queen is gonna throw this wedding for us. And then her sister sees that I have feelings for Kate at their wedding. So the wedding is being thrown by the queen. Edwina gets all the way up there sees a look between Anthony and Kate and it's like, oh my God, you guys are in love. So the sister sees and Anthony's like, I'll still marry you. And Edwina's like, absolutely the fuck not. I have some self-respect. Thank you for asking. And then Anthony and Kate find themselves with more tension, more steamy scenes. And then again, she gets hurt and he's like, please wake up, I love you. So in both, you know, cases, at least it ends with Kate getting hurt and him being like, no, I love you, don't die. I'm supposed to die, not you, you're supposed to live. You're too pretty to die. Absolutely wild. So they, they tie back up in the same spot. And listen, okay, I watched it and I left that show uncomfortable. I guess we'll start with my smallest change that I disliked, right? And or it's not really that small because it's a big feature in season one. Um, I guess if they were only going to ever do one season of Bridgerton, then Anthony has a character arc where originally in season one, he, he's dating this woman, Sienna. She engages in sexual promiscuity so not exactly an option to be the future lady bridgerton but he's like you know what i love you so much what's the point of being lord bridgerton if i can't marry you and she's like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be your woman in the shadows i want to be on your arm you shouldn't i'm not gonna marry somebody who stoops to having to marry me i like what i do thank you very much i don't need saving and anthony's like hmm now i'm broken hearted fair I enjoyed that arc. I enjoyed how he started. Like, oh, I'm just gonna keep you my lady of the night. And she was like, no. And he was like, fine, I'm gonna marry you. And she was like, no. And he was broken hearted. And you know what? That sets up really well for why he may not want to fall in love in the second season, because he was just broken hearted, right? Of course, in the first Bridgerton book, The Duke and I, there is no Sienna. There is a Maria in the second book, The Viscount Who Loves Me. There is a Maria who is Sienna. She's the opera singer, the Italian opera singer. There's one scene where he's like, uh, you know, Kate's hiding in his office and he's seducing Miss Maria. And he's like, oh, I don't have to stop seeing you because the only reason I would have to stop seeing you is if I love my wife. And Kate's like, because he's pursuing her sister. So she's like, obviously, you're not gonna love my sister and you're pursuing her? Yeah, you're a fantastic catch, right? But that, that it ends there. The buck stops there. He doesn't see Maria anymore after that. But okay, so they made, they made a change. That happens. Changes get made. And I, you know, I liked the arc and I like how it set him up for instead of being afraid he's going to die young and uh, that's why he's afraid of love. He's afraid of love because it, it bit him with Miss uh, Maria Sienna. But then it's like they just completely forget about that in the show. They're like, oh, Anthony did want to fall in love. He was willing to fall in love with somebody and he was willing to give up everything to fall in love with somebody. We don't remember that. 
He's back to he's never wants to fall in love because his dad died when he was young and we're going with the, sh the with the book plot. Absolutely blows my mind because I'm like, did we all just forget collectively that season one happened and Anthony, like his whole arc is erased by you guys making this change. Also, I don't like how I had to watch him fall in love with somebody it didn't pan out and then right away without any you know it would have been one thing if it was one of the other siblings that had this great love arc because then i could have at least gotten a season in between to kind of like get over it but immediately after so you're telling me immediately after he gets rejected by this sienna girl he's like okay i'm gonna get married but i'm not gonna fall in love even though i was just in love because i don't believe in love because my dad died young no doesn't work for me can't buy into that thank you the book plot makes a lot more sense because he just he never even loved the opera singer. He just was in lust with her. That is my second biggest gripe with the changes. My biggest gripe, because <laughs> this isn't going in order, is how much they let him come between the sisters. Because obviously there's a lot of tension where in both the show and the books where Anthony is trying to court Edwina, but he finds himself in these positions with Kate, arguing with Kate. He finds himself in the water with Kate. He finds himself playing palm all and getting, you know, competitive with Kate, whatever. And there's a lot of tension and that's good, right? The tension is good. But in the book, while he seriously pursues Edwina, he never gets to the point of like coming between the sisters. Like the sisters are still always best friends. They're like this really close family. Like the mom and the two girls are all really, really close. And he never gets between them. Like the sisters don't really argue about him. They don't really fight over him. And I like that because I don't like a man coming between sisters. I don't like sibling sharing ever, but at least in this case, he's never actually in love with Edwina and he never actually like does anything. Like he doesn't really seriously court her. Like he brings her flowers, but he also brings flowers for Kate and their mom. And you know, he brings her down to the field, but Kate's there whatever. In the show, he gets all the way to marrying the sister. And of course, that's going to drive a wedge in rivalry. There's so much rivalry between the sisters in the show. And I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And it's so uncomfortable. And it's not interesting to watch. Like I don't enjoy watching the two sisters being upset with each other. And one of them thinks she's getting married. And one of them thinks she's going to be so happy only for her groom to be in love with her sister. That's awful. That is worst case scenario for my life. That would destroy me. I would never again get out of bed if I got to the altar on my wedding day and my husband and my sister were secretly in love behind my back. Do you know how mad I would be? Immediate cut off from everyone. I don't think that there is any situation where I could ever excuse that. No, thank you. I hated that they did that. I hated it. You want to tell me that this loving, really nice, really caring family, two sisters and a mom who've been through everything together and they love each other and they do whatever for each other. In the book, Edwina is so happy when Anthony and Kate get together because Edwina was never into Anthony because he was never like seriously courting her so much that he got to marrying her or proposing to her. She's like, oh, I knew he was in love with you. Anyone with eyes could see it. I'm just so glad that it works out. And you know what? Edwina gets her happily ever after with her scholar husband who's poor because the whole time she's only ever wanted to fall in love with a scholar but she didn't have the money because her family's poor to support them. Well, great news. Now Kate fell in love and they have money so they can support them. So it doesn't matter. So Edwina gets her happy ending with her scholar dude too. And it works out so well for everyone. And that is a really good arc for everyone and wraps up really well. And for whatever reason, we had to make it 12 times worse where Edwina gets the short end of the stick because she thinks she's getting a happily ever after. But her fiance is in love with her sister. That's Terrible. Why would you do that? I don't understand. I don't understand in the slightest. Not great. Maybe to create more tension when it comes to like, like they throw a ball and everything and nobody comes because they are the outcasts of the town because the queen was throwing their wedding and you know, it obviously got called off because again, the groom was in love with the bride's sister. I also feel scandalized on their behalf. And those are the bad changes. And to be fair, there are good changes too. Like they, again, have a whole subplot with the Featheringtons that isn't in the book where they have a cousin coming in from America who's the new Lord Featherington and they're trying to get him married off to one of the daughters because they don't want the Lord Featherington name and money to leave them and then they're out on the street. You know, there's the whole Penelope Collin thing is being more developed and Benedict, the second brother, he's in art school and he's like, oh my God, did I only ever get in because Anthony bought me a spot or whatever. So all my work derivative, I don't actually know if that's what his concern is. I don't know enough about art to say but 
there's more of that going on. And even more spicy, the queen is trying to figure out the whole time who Lady Whistledown is. And again, there's no queen so far in the books. Queen Charlotte is a complete departure. Also, Eloise isn't out in the books, but I don't really think Eloise being out had much to do with anything. So even in the show, that subplot kind of felt her whole like feminist going to figure out who Lady Whistledown thing is and falling in love with a, or at least falling in like with a printing boy that isn't in there because nothing about Eloise is in there. Kind of, she's like, you know, a little helpful, but she's not nearly as fleshed out as she is in the show. And, um, you know, we never find out who Lady Whistledown is in the books so far. And it's interesting to me in the show that they, you know, at the end it does get revealed that it's Penelope. I don't know, because in other shows, like, it just reminds me so much of Gossip Girl. And Gossip Girl would have never given that to us that early. They would have sent us down, like, a million different rabbit holes. But I, I mean, I guess it's not Gossip Girl. And Gossip Girl's revealed then, spoiler alert, being Dan was actually one of the worst things that has ever happened to me. So... Maybe it's for the best that they revealed it early so they could avoid all the plot holes and inconsistencies that they get when they just are like, we don't know who it is. <laughs> and we're just gonna throw out a random name at the end. One second, I have to go get my lipstick. I don't know if I wanna do like a darker pink lip or go my go-to brighter pink lip. Maybe I'll combine them. Getting crazy. Yeah, I'm happy with that. But yeah, all the, the subplots and stuff with the brother and with Eloise and with Penelope and I forget his name, Colin. None of those are books. Oh, none of them are in the book. But I like it. I love, I, again, I mentioned last time how I like the Featherington subplot and I stand by that. I like how much more fleshed out it is. I think they're all, at least like whoever plays the mom or like the mom's character is super interesting and Penelope's character is super interesting. And I just, I, I don't know, I find that a really refreshing addition to the story. So it's not just all focused on the one story, but overall I would rate this like a two out of 10 for how much I liked the book to show adaptation. I think the book already had Everything spelled out the way where it worked out and was a good story and wrapped up well. My only really big, big, big complaint with the book is how much the author uses the word rake. I think we could have picked up a thesaurus, found synonyms, and really restructured that because if I had to read the word rake one more time, it was going to make my brain explode. It became one of those words where it lost all meaning because of how much I read it. I was like, is this even a real word anymore? Like my brain was just like, rake, 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 Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I hated that. But I loved, I really liked the story overall. So I didn't understand why we had to put so many unnecessary changes that in my humble opinion, made the story worse and made it less watchable and made it less interesting. There were changes that made it more interesting. The Featheringtons, the uh, Benedict's art, whatever. I don't know, I haven't gotten to his book. I think his story is next. So I will talk about that when it comes out, but it hasn't yet. Eloise and her whole thing. That was super fascinating and interesting. So I give points. I award points for those. I take off massive, massive, massive points for the inconsistencies with Anthony's past love life and whether or not he is open to love. But the big change that they made where he gets all the way to the altar with Edwina and is still in love with Kate. I just, I cannot abide that. That is like, that is at least minus eight stars. Realistically, minus all stars. That is actually, I think, a nightmare situation. Like, I think you could have literal nightmares over that. If Laura, if you're ever watching this, if I found out that you and my husband were secretly in love, but you let me marry him anyway, I'm gonna be so mad. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously that gets me heated. That gets me so heated. I didn't understand why they did it when I watched it. And I was like, wow, these books be wild in. And then I read the book and I was like, we had a perfectly good coherent story here. We had the additions that you guys made that did not depend on getting all the way to a wedding um, between Anthony and Edwina. So I don't know why we did that. I hated it when I watched it in the show. I hated it 4,000 times more in retrospect when I realized it wasn't in the books and there was no reason to change it that I can think of. Maybe I'm crazy. If there is a reason to change it that you can think of and I'm just missing it, let me know, please, because then I can sleep easier at night, which is a crazy thing to say because this actually does not affect my life in the slightest, but I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. So maybe it does. That's something that's that'll get you thinking um anyway i hope this was at least a little bit more coherent and a little bit less rambly because i'm done uh i've given all my thoughts that's that's all of them that's all my thoughts i'm just gonna go lay down on the couch with my empty brain for the rest of the day so 
As always, thank you so much for watching. Please like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. Um, and as always, again, let me know what you're reading, what you want to see next. And I will be here to maybe make that happen. No? Okay. Anyway, catch y'all in the next one. <laughs> Bye.